Hi friends, welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna have a conversation that we need to have because it's getting into summertime. And what happens in summertime? We usually wear less clothes as women. And so I wanted to have a conversation with you guys about modesty. But wait, hold up. I know a lot of you right now are saying, oh my gosh, another talk about modesty. I've heard that so many times. Don't worry, I'm gonna only take about 10 minutes of your time, I promise. I will not take any longer. And I promise that I will share something that maybe you have not thought of before. We as Christian women are called to be in the world, but not of the world. And I think so often today, Christian women look nothing like everyone else in the world. You look at Instagram profiles and someone in their bio says, oh, I'm a Christian, a Christ follower. And then they have so many immodest, photos of themselves and it's like wait hold up aren't we supposed to be different i really truly do think we are supposed to be different but the most common thing i hear and this is what i want to address in this video is this excuse that women use well it's not my fault if a guy lusts and i'm like you guys what does that say to christian community and supporting each other in our walks with God. To me, that sounds really, really selfish. But first, I do need to preface that you're right. It's not our fault. We don't cause, we don't make someone sin, right? We're not responsible for someone else's sin. But we as believers are responsible to support others in Christ, to encourage others in Christ, and to help people in their walks with God. So if we are doing something that we obviously know is going to cause a man or even another woman, if they struggle with same sex attraction, if it's going to cause someone else to struggle, then why are we doing it? Let's look at the scripture passage. It says, so if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. You get this community aspect, something we've lost in American culture of the idea of supporting and encouraging each other. But it goes on and says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. So my question for you today is, are you looking to the interests of others and what you put on? And what is your motive for what you put on? Is it out of selfish ambition, conceit? Well, I look really great. Well, I've been working out this summer, so of course I should be able to show off such and such, <laughs> you know, those are not good motivational factors. And I think we also have to address the fact that we as Christian women should never say, should, this shouldn't even be a thought in our mind is I wanna look sexy today. No, <laughs> sexy, we just separate the why from that word and what do we get sex? What does God say sex is meant for? It's meant for in the covenant of marriage. So if you want to look sexy, then say that for in the privacy of your bedroom with your husband if you're married. And if you're not married, then there should be no looking sexy anywhere. I'm sorry. Our goal as Christian women should be to look set apart, to look pure, to be women of innocence. Why are those things not valued, not honored anymore? Because that is what we are supposed to be. Does that mean that sometimes we're going to have to put something back on the shelf? Does that mean that sometimes we're going to have to go through our closet and say, oh, you know, I'm farther along in my walk with God and I'm being convicted a little bit more now about this outfit, this swimsuit, whatever that I'm wearing. I've had to do that in my closet. Is it fun? No, because sometimes the outfit is cute and sometimes we're like, I look good in that outfit. But we have to go back to the fact that we need to encourage and support our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we need to be set apart from the world. Do you realize that so many young men struggle with pornography? I have this statistic here. 68% of church going men look at porn regularly and 33% of women aged 25 and under search for porn at least once a month. The fact is that even when we go to the mall, we watch TV commercials, there's almost pornography everywhere. So why can we not be a safe haven for other brothers and sisters in Christ when they're around us, where they don't have to go in their mind, oh, can't look at that, can't look at that, protect my mind, protect their mi my mind as much. You know, yes, a guy can last no matter what we wear, but can we not help them so that they can 
feel a little bit more safe so they can feel a little bit more comfortable when we're around them and that we can support them. Let's get back to this mindset of we are community. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. So let's support each other. And this summer, I encourage you to pray about what you're wearing. Take a second thought. Sometimes we're not even in the habit of thinking about, is this appropriate to wear? Because we never learn that. It doesn't have to be this legalistic thing. I'm not saying go around and wear pants all summer or long dresses all summer, but I am saying to take some more time to be aware and to think about what you're wearing so that you can be a godly example to women your age. Like, oh wow, this girl, she's dressing modestly. Like, and it looks cute, like maybe I should do that. Encouraging that and also encouraging younger women than us. So that's my challenge to you today. I hope this video inspired you with putting together your summer wardrobe. Please give this a video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And see you guys in my next video, bye.